<clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Emi Abramson. I'm one of the founders at Nearpod. And today, I'd like to talk about our business model, our growth history, our background. Uh, I'm not going to be speaking specifics about our product. If you're interested in seeing our product in action, I'm happy to do a demo afterwards to whoever. But I wanted to focus on our business model and our growth trajectory. So we, the company started by three founders. We've been friends for over 25 years, and this is our fourth startup. And the startup prior to Nearpod was a startup in which we were a software house for publishers, and we were helping companies convert physical to digital. We were the company developing the e-reader for Barnes & Nobles when they launched the Nook and converted thousands of titles from physical to digital with animations, audio, and then we did a lot of learning apps for Disney. So we were into the software development for publishers, content for education. And with the, with the launch of the iPad, we felt that all the development that we were doing were what we call standalone and self-paced learning. And we envisioned, this was five years ago, and we envisioned a time when everybody's going to carry a device. And if the publisher were going to continue deploying solutions that were self-paced and standalone, we thought, what's in for the teachers? And we thought about a solution that could help increase engagement and collaboration in a classroom full of devices. And we come up with the idea of a synchronized classroom in which the teacher can collaborate with the students in a synchronized way all together. And then we did a lot of research, and we found out that most of the students don't participate because they are afraid of raising their hand. And then the ones that raise their hand can only participate once or twice a class. That leaves a ton of feedback out of the interaction, out of the teachers. We talked to many, many teachers, and they told us that they were kind of in the dark until they can take a test, which happens not very often. So we did a few tests with schools, and we gave them a platform at the time. It was not cloud-based. It was all local. But the reaction from students and teachers was incredible. The teachers were getting a ton of feedback that they were not able to get before. The students were participating more because they were safe, knowing that only the teacher will see their answer. And they knew also that if they don't answer, the teacher will know that they are not answering. So at that time, we went with the idea of fundraising, and we got 100% no's. It's impossible. Forget about that. You're never going to get into education. You're never going to sell to districts. Forget about selling to districts. So we decided to invest our own money. And we decided, little by little, to discontinue our services company and fully invest in Nearpod. We spent an hour, a year developing the platform, and we put the platform for free. We said, if we cannot go to districts, let's go after teachers. We knew that teachers don't have money. So we said, let's do grassroots, freemium, after teachers, and then we go upstream from the teachers. So we put the platform for free, and after a few months, we already had 100,000 teachers using the platform. We were in the top five apps in the App Store, in the top five apps in the Google Play, and the traction was unbelievable. So at that time, we were able to do our seat round, and then they told us, OK, you got traction. Good enough. Show us that you can monetize this. So we put a paid version, and we started to get monetization. We get revenues. And obviously, this was not possible 10, 15 years ago, because nobody was able to reach 100K, 200K teachers within months after launching a platform if it wasn't for these distribution models that exist today that were not existent before, plus social media. I mean, very simple. We hired some social media marketers experts that were after the influencers. And the influencers were blogging and tweeting and talking about an airport. And that all of a sudden, thousands of downloads appeared. So again, all these variables help us with this business model that I think would have been impossible 15 years ago. So we were able to monetize, and we were able to renew and retain the vast majority of our clients. At that time, we were able to raise our Series A. And after that, we continue to double the company every single year since we started. We've been doubling the company every single year. So um, after a million plus teachers were in the platform, we received the need uh, of offering content as well. In our platform, teachers are able to upload whatever content they had to interact with the students, PowerPoint, PDF, Word, whatever. 
And then we decided to start offering content for them. So now we have a content marketplace with thousands of lessons that the teachers can download and use. So two, th two options, they can use their own content or they can use the content that is in our store. And the content in our store comes from two sources. It comes from partnerships we have with publishers and an author's program that we did. So we hire teachers to create content and we curate the content. We partner with Stanford College of Education to curate that content, add pedagogy, add curriculum standards. So all a couple of hundred teachers that are creating content for us uh, are the ones that are sourcing and we are paying them, we are sharing revenue. So we're very happy to issue checks every month to teachers uh, for creating content and selling their content through our platform. Brief history of our trajectory so far. As I mentioned before, um, launched in 2012, been growing. Last year, uh, we raised our Series B, uh, doubling the company every year, doubling users, doubling employees. Um, we are planning to keep doubling as much as we can. Um, we are adding content and other solutions to districts. Today, we are probably in 20,000 schools uh, in over 150 different countries. We serve probably one in every 10 schools in the US, and we log in about 5 million users every day. This is our MRR chart, which looks very nice. And I mean, the, the beauty of SaaS model, right? So we learned this all the way. Um, we, we are in education, but at the same time, we are a SaaS company, which was not very common in education five years ago. So we started all the playbooks and we hired all the SaaS experts to follow the SaaS model. And those are the key variables that we focus on, on every day. And we live and breathe this variable. Obviously, we hire former teachers and principals, and we know we are in education. But more, most importantly, we look at these variables all day long. We talk about the business model from teachers to districts. Very interesting in our business model, as of today, 99% of our revenue came from bottoms up. We don't have one field safe rep in, in the field, zero. We will eventually. But everything starts from teacher usage and going upstream. And we've been able to convert that. That's not a random case. We've done it thousands of times. We have more than 3,000 schools and districts that are paying. So we've been done over that machine over and over and over. Typical funnel. Um, this is very typical for any SaaS company. And we start with a free engagement, conversion, and the customer success for expansion over and over, over and over. Happy to show you the platform if you are interested, and happy to take questions afterwards. I'll, I'll be here for, for a while. Thank you very much.